Welcome to JSA TV, the newsroom for tech and telecom professionals. I'm Jamie Scott Okataya of JSA. Joining me here in beautiful Honolulu at PTC 2018, my good friend, Mr. Ken Thorpe. He is the owner of Cascadia Fibernet. Ken, welcome to JSA TV. Oh, thanks, Jamie. It's a pleasure to be here. And big news, 2018, huge year for you, especially for the, your Cascadia Fibernet project. Can you tell us a little bit about this project? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, been, uh, it's been quite a, uh, uh, quite a long haul in terms of trying to get to this particular place. But uh, over the last year and a half, we finally managed to get, uh, get our funding in place. And uh, we're looking forward to building out the largest high-density network between Vancouver and Seattle. And that uh, we anticipate actually being able to start construction July 1, which just happens to be Canada's birthday. And so what type of companies would benefit from this project? Uh, every, essentially every American carrier that has Canadian customers, Vancouver and Seattle are drawing closer and closer together every day. Um, in September of 2016, there was an actual memorandum of understanding signed between uh, the Premier of British Columbia and Governor Jay Inslee of Washington to promote more north-south business in Cascadia. And so, it's, so Canadian, Canadian customers or Canadian carriers have American clients in Seattle and vice versa, so it makes no end of sense to get this done. And not to put too fine an edge to it, there is no more dark fiber left between the two cities. And the last, the redundant route broke two weeks ago, won't be fixed for another two weeks. Uh, so what attracted you, besides perhaps uh, lack of dark fiber, to that Vancouver, Seattle, and Portland region? People in that area live in Cascadia. It's an actual economic and cultural region that most people aren't aware of. And so for, for me, it's at the end of my telecom career, and it's a chance to actually proliferate business and community good throughout that entire region. I love that personal, uh, heartfelt uh, take on this. This <laughs> makes it a, a story of the heart, which I like. Sure. No, thank you. And now your, your project also includes a landing station. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so, uh, so uh, we've been negotiating with the Port of Vancouver to uh, find space for an actual beach manhole in the actual harbor, and uh, we've done that. And there's, there's two aspects to this. One is uh, hopefully a Trans-Pacific cable of some kind, um, which we may uh, do ourselves, or uh, well, and uh, a route to uh, Prince Rupert, which would include all the coastal communities um, on the west coast of uh, British Columbia's mainland and the east coast of Vancouver Island, uh, in concert with the dissolving the digital divide and providing uh, greater uh, greater bandwidth and more competitive bandwidth to communities that would uh, that are today underserved. That's deep water there. Yeah, very deep water, yes. He just taught me that. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you expect to be up and running? What, uh, what are the timeline here? So our, um, uh, we, our, our budget for rights of way and, uh, and route perfection has been approved by our investment partner. Uh, we got that news on Tuesday. Uh, February 1, we start with that process. Uh, by the time we get to ITW in, in May, we expect to be able to announce a time to actually start construction, which we're hoping is July 1. And then um, we're into third quarter of 2019 is our anticipated, uh, our anticipated in-service date. That's aggressive. Yes, it is. And yep. exciting. Yeah. So, Ken, we are absolutely going to be watching closely this project and reporting on it whenever you uh, give us a little insight. So where can our viewers go to learn more, too, on their own? CascadiaGateway.com. Yeah, CascadiaGateway.com. you got to yeah. love it. Yeah. Ken, thank, thank you. you for joining us. Well, thank you, Jamie. It's such a pleasure. And thank you, viewers, for tuning in to JSA TV.